Hello students, today we are going to start the next part. See, in the earlier part, we are actually started the last phylum that is chordata. Under the chordata, there were, there were three sub phylums we have started. They were the Eurochordata for subphylum, second subphylum was cephalochordata. Both Eurochordata and cephalochordata are known together as protochordata or protocortex. The third subphylum is the subphylum vertebrata. Vertebrata, they are also known as uh, craniata. Let us see the general characteristics. Under the vertebrates are number of species, number of classes, divisions are here. So we will see all of them. First of all, we'll see some general characters. First of all, in case of vertebrates, uh, the brain is enclosed within a brain box, a membrane. That membrane is known as crania. As already I have given in the previous videos also, that the brain, suppose this is the brain, this brain has to be protected by a protective sheet so that directly the skull bones cannot hurt the brain cells, right? The neurons, they are very much delicate. Brain is very much delicate. So that's why in between the skull bone and brain, there is a membrane very much uh, protective in nature that is actually of three side, uh, three sub layers present that is known as cranium. So the presence of cranium is a typical characteristics of the subphylum vertebrata. Next one, we will see the notochord. See, I told the chordates that all vertebrates are chordates, but all chordates are not vertebrates. The reason that notochord was present in eurochordata and cephalochordata but if it comes to vertebrata, notochord is present only in the embryonic state. Whenever they are uh, just born, at that time the notochord uh, shifts to a cartilaginous structure or the vertebral column. I told already what is vertebral column. The structure enclosed the spinal cord inside and that's why the structure that divide into some pieces that is known as vertebrae. And from the intervertebral space, the spinal accessory nerve can arise, right? So that was the vertebral column. This is a typical characteristics of the subphylum vertebrata. That is the presence of vertebral column in the organism, but notochord is present only in the embryonic state. Next characteristics that they have the ventral muscular heart. Our word heart is present on the ventral side. But if it comes to the non-cordates, they have heart on the dorsal side. But in case of the vertebrates, we have the pumping organ properly. The heart, that organ is present on the ventral side. If it comes to the fishes, they have two-chambered heart. If it comes to amphibia, three-chambered heart. If it is reptiles, they have three three and half chambered or incompletely four chambered heart and in case of apes and mammals we have four chambered heart right so the next one that the okay so here this is kidneys kidneys are uh, mesonephric or metanephric so these are the different types of kidneys we will discuss in detail what is the type of kidney mm -hmm. So what happened, kidneys will perform two functions, what are they? One is they will perform filtration, they will form uh, the urine, they will help in purification and the second thing they will also help in maintaining the water and salt balance, right? So this is the function of kidney that will be either mesonephric or metanephric, uh, mesonephric and metanephric. Now after that see the next one that for locomotion, we are going to have paired appendages. If it comes to the lower grade of organism like fishes, they are going to have paired fins. And if it comes to the tetrapods, higher grade of vertebrates, we are going to have the limbs. Okay, we are going to have the legs and hands. Right. Next one, all of us we are unisexual in this subphylum vertebrata. No organism is hermaphrodite. All of the organisms will have separate male and separate female. Right? So that is about the general characteristics of vertebrates. After that, let us move to the uh, classification. If it comes to classification, see, this classification you have to know that terms you have to know very much important. So first of all, just see, this subphylum vertebrata is divided into two divisions. 
the agnatha and nephrostomata one thing you have to note that agnatha the word agnatha means this organisms are jawless right jawless means they do not have this proper two jaws we have two jaws right the upper jaw is known as maxilla and lower jaw is known as mandible so that jaws are absent in the agnatha and in case of nephrostomata we are going to have the jaws right next one under the jawless organism if that organism don't have the jaw then obviously the mouth shape structure will be circular right so under the agnatha there are two divisions what are they the classes are ostracodermy and cyclostomata now ostracodermy is one group of agnatha that class completely become extinct there is no a living organism survive so that's why we don't have to study that so this is ostracodermy who completely disappeared from the world next one cyclostomes we have to study two species one is lamprey and another is hagfish right so these are the cyclostomata as the name says cyclo means circular and stomata means mouth those organisms have round mouth they are actually the cyclostomes under the agnatha now come to the jaw bearing organism who have proper two jaws the maxilla and mandible under that we are going to have this uh, super classes what are they this is pisces and another is the tetrapoda pisces means those organism for locomotion have the fins right these organisms are coming under the super class pisces where we are going to see three classes one is placodermy this placodermy is also extinct so that's why we don't have to study but yes chondrichthys and osteichthys chondrichthys means those organism the vertebral column is uh, cartilaginous these organisms are known as chondrichthys and those organism where the vertebral column is seem to be bony they are known as uh, osteichthys right so these are the two classes living classes found in the uh, super class pisces those classes are osteichthys and chondrichthys after that the next super class is tetrapoda tetra means four poda means limb those organism have four limb right these are coming under the super class tetrapoda this classes are amphibia reptilia ape and mammal if it comes to the amphibia amphi means dual habitat those organism which can be found both in terrestrial and aquatic conditions they are known as amphibians one example very common that is frog right so this organisms comes under amphibia next one see reptilia like suppose one example is a uh, crocodile then the snake they are coming under the reptilia that reptile the word reptile means those organism which creep or crawl on the ground this type of organisms they are known as reptiles or reptilia next one the next class is ape ape or birds those organism where we will not see four limbs they will have two limbs only that are the hind limbs but upper the uh, four limbs they are modified to wings so these organisms are aerial organisms aerial vertebrates if for aerial or volant adaptation they have lots of body modifications so that they can decrease their body weight and can fly right so that is known as the class a and after that we will come to the last group of organism which is the most complex organism that is known as the class mammalia mammalia means those organism who process mammary gland to feed the new young ones so this type of organisms are known as class mammalia so under the class mammalia we are going to have the different varieties of animal they can be aquatic like whale they can be aerial like bat they can be jumping organism like kangaroos they can be egg-laying mammal like platypus they can be like the normal placental mammal like the dogs cat 
cow, elephant or tiger or human. So these are all about the classification of vertebrata. Hope you have understood. So that is all about the uh, organism. After that, whenever we will uh, see the next part that will be on cyclostomata under agnatha. So cyclostomata, we have to discuss the difference between lamprey and hagfish. We don't have to study ostracodermy because this group of organism are extinct from the world. So in the next video, we will see the differences between lamprey and hagfish. Thank you. So as the video is too short, so that's why I just include this part also in the same video. So first of all, see the division agnatha. Agnatha means those organism which have a circular mouth or those organisms which don't have the jaws, right? So those organisms which don't have the jaws, this type of organisms, they're known as agnata, okay? So let us see some type of characteristics. What are they? First of all, they are most primitive organism. See, on the vertebrates, if you see all the vertebrates, the most primitive, which have lots of underdeveloped characteristics, they are the agnata okay like the other organisms they have the jaws this organism they don't have the jaws so that's why they have circular mouth right next one this organism have only one nostril this is going to be very much important because rest of all the organisms will have two nostrils where two nasal pores will be present but in this group of organism only one single nostril will be present right next one this organism will be cold-blooded cold-blooded organisms they are also known as poikilothermic animal right poikilothermic animals means those organisms who cannot maintain the constant body temperature that means suppose if it comes to human we have 36.5 degrees celsius or roughly 37 degrees celsius that is going to be constant right irrespective of the environmental temperature we are going to have the same temperature like in case of birds also they have a constant body temperature but if it comes to the reptiles the amphibians as well as the fishes even in case of the cyclostomes they cannot maintain the constant body temperature it's not cold or it's not hot they just cannot maintain the constant body temperature that is known as cold-blooded or poikilothermic animal right now after that see on that division agnetha we have to see only one class that class is cyclostomata because the other class that ostracodermy that was completely extinct we don't have to see let's just move to the class cyclostomata those have circular mouth first one they are ectoparasite on some fishes see this organism they don't bear the jaws and with the help of the jaws they can catch prey or they can uh, be a carnivorous animal right so this organism cannot catch a prey properly so they will hold to the skin of the larger fishes from them they will take the food materials right so they are ectoparasite on some fishes they will have around 6 to 15 pairs of gill slates they will have circular mouth already told you as the name suggests they don't have the jaws that's why they have circular mouth next one they're devoid of scales and paraffins like the fishes fishes have the scales for their uh, protection outside they are having an exoskeleton but in case of this organism they don't have any scales right next one circulation is closed tight now properly blood vessels have developed so that's why they have uh, blood flowing only inside the blood vessels so they have closed circulation next one they uh, in case of this organism stomach is absent they don't have proper stomach okay they will have the alimentary canal but for uh, proper digestion they don't have a exact same stomach that organ is absent now let's just move to some of the cyclostomes one organism that is known as lamprey i have given one species that is petromycin and another is the hagfish one example is mexin hagfish hag means ugly ugly means in this organism they don't have the uh, jaws so they will have rough irregular skin folds right so that's become a ugly type of mouth they are going to have so this organism is known as hagfish otherwise this organism 
organism that is known as lamprey. Uh, one example is petromycin that is going to have the circular mouth. Now just see the differences. In case of lamprey, they are marine as well as freshwater as compared to the hackfish. Hackfish are exclusively marine. Now the difference is, first of all, if it is lamprey, lamprey is one group of organism which is marine. But whenever they have to spawn, they have to lay their eggs, they come to the fresh water and they lay the uh, eggs on the fresh water, they die. Then the rivers, in the river bed, the eggs hatch, new ones come out and without their parents, how they can come to the oceans once again without the help of the parents uh, we don't know that maybe the uh, magnetic field or some another uh, ways they can understand but without the help of the parents they can come back to the uh, seas and oceans one second to their motherland one second so this group of organisms they are going to migrate actually and that type of migration normally they're and um, marine water but to lay the eggs they come to the river that group of organism they are known as uh, the anadromous organism that means they have anadromous migration exactly opposite migration is also here that is normally that fish is or that organism is freshwater but they go to the marine condition in the seas and ocean to lay the eggs and come back once again to the uh, river or may they die also in the marine condition that type of migration is known as catandromous migration just remember if it comes to the lamprey in case of them they are going to have anadromous migration right next one if it comes to the lamprey they have seven pairs of gill slits gills are present in some slits and if it comes to the hagfishes they have six to fifteen pairs of gill slits right in case of lamprey they have 10 pairs of cranial nerve i told the nerve they're arising from the brain they're known as cranial nerve and the nerve arising from the spinal cord are known as spinal accessory nerve right in case of lamprey they have 10 pairs of cranial nerve but if it comes to the hackfishes they have only eight pairs of nerves cranial nerves now in case of lamprey they have indirect development means larva is present but in case of hackfish there is no larva right next one lamprey their sexes are separate that means separate male and separate female uh, organisms petromycin suppose male and female petromycin is same but if it comes to hackfishes it is primitive so that organism is going to be hermaphrodite. that same organism will have male as well as the female reproductive organ so that's all about the lamprey difference between lamprey and hackfish hope you have understood and this part is going to be important also right just remember to word that is anadromous okay and second one is catadromous okay now what is anadromous their adult organism are marine but they go to the river to lay eggs okay but catadromous organism they're completely different that adults organisms they are actually live in the freshwater condition but they go to the marine water to lay the eggs right so that type of migration anadromous migration is shown by the lamprey so that's why the habitat point it is given that they have uh, both the two habitats that is marine as well as freshwater right so these are the differences you have to study the differences remember the differences that's all about the cyclostomes that's all thank you